Hey guys, Rob here at 3D Printscape. So over the last month or so, I've had a significant amount of questions come up around the new SKR Mini E3 version 3. Uh, so I figured now would be a good time to pick it up and do some comparisons. Uh, so what I got here is the new version 3 in the box still. And then I took the version 2 out of my printer so I can kind of do a comparison side by side to show you what's going on. I plan on making a couple videos. Uh, this first one here is doing a comparison between the two. And then I'll do a couple firmware videos kind of talking about some of the different is there and how to actually set up the firmware and then I'll probably do an install video I'm either gonna put the uh, v3 back in my ender 3 or my ender 5 plus I haven't decided yet all right so let's go ahead and get started but before we do if you guys haven't already make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and if you have any questions about anything covered I uh, go and leave a comment below or join us on discord all right so first I kind of wanted to do a overview of the boxing um, the v2 came with just this generic black box um, they did change that up quite a bit going over to the V3, uh, which I do like the style a lot more. Um, let's go ahead and open it up. So we've got the board that's in an anti-static bag, uh, comes with extra jumpers here that you can use, and a small USB cable. Uh, I think some people said they got the rubber duck with this one. I did not, so I don't know if it's in all of them or if I just got unlucky, <laughs> but either way, it's okay. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the V3 and start taking a look at it. All right, so first, before I start going into some of the comparisons, I did want to talk about costs first. Um, the V3 here is a tad bit cheaper than the V2. I think when I looked on Amazon the other day, this one was going for about $45. This was about $48. So they're not too far off. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the comparison. Um, one of the obvious changes is the heatsink. Uh, from a visual aspect, you've got this large one here that covers all of the drivers versus these individual ones that you had to put on. Um, whether or not that actually makes a difference performance-wise, I don't know. Um, I would think it would help uh, kind of disperse the heat a little bit more because it is larger. I don't know if it's necessary, but it does look a lot nicer. Uh, either way, I don't think you're going to have an issue with heat with the drivers. But that said, the drivers are basically the same and you have the same amount of uh, stepper motor connections as well. So looking at the front of the board here, um, the biggest change is gonna be that they swapped from uh, the mini USB to micro USB, uh, which is a better connector overall. Um, people tend to have more cables for them. I would have liked to have seen USB-C. They might get there eventually. I don't know if it'll be a different board or whatnot, um, but they did change that out, which was nice. All right, now going into the chip itself, uh, the V3 here has a 512K chip. Uh, where the V2 had the 256, even though I know a lot of people flash 512K firmware if they were having issues, I've done it myself. Um, I think they restricted that in the firmware uh, a little while back, but before they actually put that restriction in, a lot of people were going that route. Um, that said, for the average user, I don't think you're gonna have any issues even if you wanted to stay with the V2. They both work just fine for most use cases. Both of the boards have uh, built-in EEPROM, so it'll actually save everything to the chip itself instead of having to worry about saving it to an SD card. Um, so it's not really a change between the two, just worth noting. Um, one of the other big differences here is the additional fan ports. You have three fan ports that can all be controlled individually now versus the two that you had on the V2. Uh, that's good because most 3D printers have three fans including the uh, Ender 3, which is what I had the V2 on. Basically, you've got the fan underneath uh, cooling the board itself. You've got the blower fan, and then you got the hot end fan. So this just allows you to be able to control those independently. Another thing to note with the V3 is you have 3.3 or 5 volt options for the SPI output, uh, where the V2 only had the 5 volt. Uh, again, for most cases, it's not a big deal, but depending upon what you're trying to do with it, the options can help out. And then you've got all of your standard ports, so your BL Touch, your CR Touch, whatever you're connecting to it, um, your TFT connector if you're using the TFT 35 or whatnot, one of the touch screens, uh, NeoPixels are on both, the filament runout sensor. Basically, all of the standard items that you would expect to be on the board are there. Maybe just move slightly. Uh, I think some of the jumpers moved up over here uh, because of the big heat sink here. It did um, cause them to relocate a couple things, but they're pretty clearly labeled on the board what each one is. So that really covers the differences. I didn't think this would be a long video, but I did want to kind of give you a side-by-side -side comparison of the two boards. Here, I'll flip them up a little bit so you can see it a little better. Um, 
Now, you might ask why you might still want to go with the V2 over the V3. The answer to that, at least for the time being right now, is firmware. Um, the firmware and configs, at least for Marlin, is a lot more stable. I have had some people run into random issues with um, some of the pre-built configs uh, on the V3. Uh, I will be doing a video coming up soon covering the firmware, but I wanted to keep that as a separate video because I'm going to go into more detail there. And that said, if you were to ask me what to buy today, uh, I would say if you're willing to work with the firmware a little bit, I would go with the V3. Uh, it's a tad bit cheaper and has um, the upgraded chipset and a couple other features. Um, but if you're just wanting something to kind of work better out of the box, um, the V2 might still be a better option. I expect that to change over time um, as just more people start playing around with the firmware and the fake examples and stuff start to get updated. All right, guys, so that was a comparison between the SKR Mini E3 V2 and V3. Um, like I said, I like the V3 a lot, and if you're okay with playing around at the firmware a little bit more, that would be my recommendation if you were to buy a new board today. But I have had some people in the community reach out with issues with the firmware that I've helped them through, so there might be a little bit more work to get it to work the way that you want it to. Uh, if you wanted something that's a little bit more tried and true, uh, the V2 is still a great option. Um, but like I said, I prefer the V3 at this point. It's just a nicer board overall. All right, so if you have any questions about what I covered or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Uh, 